Well, hello Polygoners, I am Shaft, you are watching Polygon Gaming. We are continuing our Zerg vs Protoss matchups today, and we've got two exciting players to talk to you about. Both of them uh, kind of known for aggression, Jim Rising, the player we're looking at right now, a little bit more so, but his opponent in the red Protoss trunks is actually going for a cannon rush with a gateway on this side of the map. Gem Rising already starting to complain about this a little bit, but here's the thing. Gem Rising is continuing to let us build and he will actually let this complete. My number one recommendation is to just go ahead and send a drone over here and build again. That is the easiest way to handle a cannon rush. You can delay your gas as your opponent's also delaying their gas and everything kind of evens out. What Jim Rising has chosen to do is to hit the mid game and try to kill his opponent with like different unit compositions and stuff like that. See, like this drone does manage to get away, loses it. That's kind of nifty. I think he could have saved that. But really what it comes down to is he will no longer be able to mine. This is very easily going to start to oversaturate. He's not going to have enough larva. So there's a lot of issues that Jim Rising is now going to be facing. And the way he's choosing to answer it is by going here and going here, taking both these extractors and trying to expend this um, extra gas. Again, we're going to see the issue be larva. However, and we'll, we'll just let that play out for a moment. Now, on the other side of the map, we've got Australia, who does play for Team Sloth. You can see he's getting his second base, which is a little bit delayed. There's not a lot of tech. There's not a lot of production. He has just finished the Cyber Core and is just going to be starting the Warp Gate. And, of course, Jim Rising able to scout all of this pretty easily with his Overlord. So his opponent's up a base. But Gem Rising has a very technological advantage, and he's actually going to do a wonderful job at just sniping out this Photon Cannon. This is going to be a textbook way of dealing with cannons, and I think that this might, like, his just raw ability at defending this in this manner is, like, why he chose to do this, but it's after this point that I don't like his answer. So let's say, like, this cannon did complete, he couldn't for some reason get another base up, then this is the right play. I'll give him all of that benefit of the doubt, even though I don't think those were the circumstances here. I think he could have got a second base up. Uh, we're just going to say, you know, at this point, he's fine. At this point, he's starting plus one ranged. He's going to be about on par with his opponent. But... He's now oversaturated here, just now starting this base. He's not getting another base because he can't really afford to. His minerals are very, very low. And pulling off of these two won't do very much because this is delayed. He's just in a really bad position. Having another hatchery in a different location would have allowed him to have more larva and the ability to spend the gas that he is mining. Right now he's mining more gas than he could ever possibly use, unless maybe he made Needlelisks. Mothership Core wants to get a good scout off, knows Gem Rising is an incredibly aggressive player. Mothership Core does manage to do that and gets out of there successfully, so does see that layer is about to be completing, and that's going to compel Astraea to make a decision here. And I think the impetus is on him to attack. As you can see, he has used the fact that his heavy mineral expenditure early game allowed him to bank some gas. These immortals are the direct result of that. It is five minutes in. He has got two immortals on the field, is completing a warp prism, has plus one completing five gateways on the way. So he wants to exploit the fact that there is a lack of larva and no third base just yet for Gem Rising. Should Gem Rising try to take a third base, that will affect his army. So it's just a really good five to six minute kill shot by Astraea. It's not actually going to cost him too much as long as he's careful not to lose the Immortal. The two Immortals in this army are the most important part of this army. And the uh, Ravager's doing a good job going ahead targeting out the Sentry, but loses one Ravager. 
that one sentry does get picked up and this is going to be a dead ravager some great micro tricks here by both players but Estrella going to kill off both those ravagers with only the scout being traded he actually did not lose any units in that engagement now this warp prism gonna go ahead and drop off the two immortals here and over here we've got a little bit of another attack setting up and this is gonna buy Astraea some time to get more units rallied across this third immortal gonna be on the way and kills off a gas by Jim Rising we know Jim Rising uh, likes his technological abilities so not having that gas hurts him but as you can see, Jim Rising still doesn't have that great of an economy. He's currently 10 workers behind, they're even on upgrades, and Hydralists aren't that much better than what Astraea is pushing out. Not yet, because there's no Zerg production behind it. Zerg units are not that particularly good. It's the production that makes them good. The constant tech switches that makes them good, and there's just none of that supporting Jim Rising's build here. We do have the Observer, gonna kill off a lot of this creep, making the Astraeus push much, much more powerful. Good concave here by Gem Rising, very smart to pull back here, does avoid the time warp there. And some good force fields, a very nice positioning by here, Astraea. Um, he is working his way towards the natural ramp force fields, of course, keeping the Hydralist from getting a decent concave. Drones being pulled off now. And as you can see, the Hydralists are just slowly bleeding. Uh, Jim Rising did lose a lot of creep there uh, due to Astraea, and Astraea just holding that ground of creep he had already killed, never venturing too far towards the third or towards the natural. Why was all of that possible? That was possible because of a lack of larva, guys. Hopefully you see the proper way to defend a cannon rush is to, at every circumstance, rebuild the hatchery somewhere else. You can cancel immediately, go build it somewhere else. You can let that finish while building somewhere else. Uh, there's all kinds of different mind games that can go into the rebuild. But let's face it, if a pylon has to be built at the new expansion, it's going to cut into the Protoss's gas even more. It's gonna delay when they can get that. So even if the um, early game gets super stretched out where neither player is actually like using the minerals too, too well, that's just going to create a different situation in the game. Whereas this is the same situation with less larva. And that's never good for a Zerg. So just cancel it. I know it's tempting to be clever with the Ravagers and stuff like that. And sure, Jim Rising pulls it off uh, more often than not. But I think that's a testament to him. Not a testament to the right way to play. Anyways, guys, I am Shaft with Polygon Gaming. I thank you so much for watching this. Until next time, Chatelet, my dudes. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.